Hey everyone, it's Amy and welcome to my channel. Thanks for joining me for today's video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about makeup trendsetters. I'm gonna be talking about those products that when they were released, they started trends that are still being followed to this day. And there were innovators in the beauty community and things that people just took advantage of and then other brands created similar products. So I just thought this would be a fun video idea. I'm sure it's been done before, but I can't say as to where, but I just thought that I would give you my version of it and basically talk about products that I think really set the trend in the beauty community for specific things. Okay, so if you guys are interested in knowing more about makeup trendsetters, then please keep on watching. Okay, so the first makeup trendsetter that I have for you guys is a product that I've already mentioned this week, but it bears mentioning again in this video because this eyeshadow palette started a wildfire of warm eyeshadow palettes, and it is the Anastasia Modern Renaissance Palette, Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette. When this palette came out, everybody went bonkers. It was so popular, and we have since seen a lot of makeup companies release warm eyeshadow palettes, but we've seen a lot of companies release dupes of this particular eyeshadow specifically. And the colors in here are just really, really beautiful. Um, the pinks and the reds and the oranges and the browns, they all just mix so well together. And I think that at the time that this came out, there was nothing else like it. And when it came out, people were just like, I've got to have that. And it seemed new and exciting. And since then, like I said, we've seen a lot of other companies kind of jump on this train um, and create these warmer eyeshadow palettes. And this one has even been duped quite a few times. I think four or five times that I can think of where it has been duped. And it is truthfully a trendsetter in the, in the makeup community. I know that I think so, and I'm sure a lot of people think so. So that is product number one. That is a trendsetter, Modern Renaissance Palette. The next one is kind of an obvious trendsetter as well, and it is the Stila Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadows. These are very, very popular, and they're popular for a reason. These were the first glittery eyeshadows that came in that, you know, with that doe foot applicator, and everybody wanted these, and everybody loved these, and they were expensive, and uh, a lot of companies caught on to that, and a lot of other companies created their own version of these for a more affordable price. So people kind of jumped on that bandwagon when these were released. It didn't happen right away. These kind of were the forerunner for quite some time in this category. But once other brands, you know, figured it out, they all released their own, you know, individual um, version of this product. Milani has one now, Essence has one now, Wet n Wild tried, but theirs are not so good. Pixie has one now, so you see a lot of other brands, I think even JCat has come out with one. You've seen a lot of other affordable brands try to come out with copycat versions of these. So these are definitely a trendsetter in makeup. Um, I believe that wholeheartedly. And they're still making these and they're still selling these at the $24 price point. I got these in a mini set. Um, but they're so good. And they're so much of a trendsetter. It's not even funny. So that is my second makeup trendsetter. Now this is an issue of which came first, the chicken or the egg, but I have the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer right here, okay, and I also have the Benefit Professional Primer. These are both uh, kind of that pore filling primer, this one's very, they're both kind of that silicone-y texture. I think this one came out first. This one set the standard for the primer industry in terms of primers. This was kind of the first thing that came out that I can think of. Now, there may have been something before this, remember. Makeup's been around a long time, but I, I know that I remember when this came out way back in the day, and this product's been around for a very, very, very long time, that primers have come a long way since this. They have multiple versions of the Smashbox primer, but this one still sells really well. Um, they have primer waters now, primers for specific skin types, primer, primers for color correcting, primers for hydration, primers for oiliness. You name it, primers have come out left and right, but this, I think, is the first and most popular primer that kind of set the standard for other primers. I know that the Porefessional is a really popular primer too, but I think this one came after this one. I can't be 100% certain, but primers, you can't tell me that this isn't like one of the uh, original primers because I think that it is and we've seen a lot of primers come since and I think it's all because of this one right here. Now the next product that I have is kind of a chicken or the egg, which came first, the chicken or the egg scenario, but I'm pretty darn sure that Anastasia Beverly Hills was the first to release a liquid lipstick. 
I'm pretty sure, I can't be 100% certain, but I know that when they released that, it was very, very popular. And I think after they released that, then along came Kylie Jenner. Here's Kylie. She's not my favorite person in the makeup community. I'm not really into her brand. But Kylie came out with her lip kits. So Anastasia, I think, started the trend, but then Kylie came out with her lip, lip, lip kits, and then things just kind of exploded from there. And then everybody was releasing a liquid lipstick. I mean, everybody. And people are still releasing liquid lipsticks, and I think we're starting to see a more of a trend going in the opposite direction, um, going back towards bullet lipsticks. This is my little Lamarck lip cream, isn't it cute? Um, we're going back towards bullet lipsticks and more hydrating lipsticks because liquid lipsticks are very dry, but at the time, at the time, liquid lipsticks, I think Anastasia was first, and then um, then Kylie released Lip Kits, and that started her brand. Lip Kits literally started her brand, if I'm not mistaken. That's how she started her brand was with Lip Kits. And so she built a whole brand, essentially, off of liquid lipstick. So, you know, that being said, you know, it's like chicken or the egg. I'm pretty sure Anastasia was first. But if they weren't, then Kylie was, and I can't remember which one. But liquid lipsticks. And these are the liquid lipsticks that don't have the top coats. They're not like the CoverGirl Outlast liquid lipsticks or the Rimmel Provocalypse or anything like that. These are the traditional true matte liquid lipsticks. And those were hugely popular when they came out. The trend has since died down, but when they came out, lots of people followed in their footsteps, slowly but surely. But I think those two, those two products, really solidified liquid lipstick in the pantheon of makeup and trends. So, yes. You either love them or you hate them. I personally don't mind them, but liquid lipsticks are still being made today. And we have, I think, ABH and Anna Kylie to thank for that one. Okay, I got two more products to talk about. And the next product I'm going to talk about is something that I don't have, okay? But it is the NARS Orgasm Blush. You guys can't tell me that this blush wasn't the blush everybody wanted to have when it came out. It was the blush, the blush you needed to have. It was that peachy pinky you know sheen to the cheeks it had that kind of uh, you know shimmery finish and everybody had it I even bought it and that was back when I really didn't wear makeup but I owned NARS Orgasm I know that I did but since that time since that blush came out and it's still out it's still come out they even re released a super orgasm and they've built the whole line off of that blush but there have been companies that have duped that blush or have come close to duping it. I can think of three off the top of my head. Uh, Elf's Twinkle Pink is a lot like NARS Orgasm but far less glittery. Milani's Luminoso is very, very similar but not glittery. It's just a sheen. And then the third one is the Pop Adult Peach Blush from Too Faced. Those blushes are very reminiscent to me of the... Um, NARS Orgasm Blush, but that was the blush that everybody had, but it's been duped a lot because it is so popular. So anytime you see a product like that, that comes at a high price point and it sells well, chances are you're going to get other companies jumping on the bandwagon and trying to make their own version, you know, so people have a dupe and they can save money. So definitely NARS Orgasm is definitely a trendsetter. Okay, so this last product, I'm pretty sure it was the main innovator in the highlighter world, and it is MAC Soft and Gentle, right here. It's a beautiful highlight, just super gorgeous. It's one of their mineralized skin finishes, and it is pretty. It's so pretty. So that product is a product that I heard about way back in the day, and people still talk about it to this day, but it's not as talked about as much anymore, but it's definitely, I think, one of the main you know, innovators of the highlight game. And since then, you know, other brands have come along and released highlighters. You know, we've gone through a huge highlighter boom. And I think, you know, we have Mac to thank for a lot of that. But one of my other highlighters that I think was quite innovative and that people were really talking about a lot was the um, Balm highlighters. And this one specifically, the Mary Luminizer highlighter. This is a very, very well-loved and well-revered highlighter and the pantheon of highlighters. Okay, so I don't have Soft and Gentle, but I do have this. And I think this followed on the heels of Soft and Gentle, and this really launched the Balm as a brand. I think this became one of their first most popular products, and they kind of piggybacked off of this and built other products and um, built their brand based on this product. So just highlighters in general, I think that Soft and Gentle and the Mary Luminizer really set the standard for highlights 
and creating a trend in the highlighting game. Um, MAC has many highlighters in their mineralized skin finish, and they have also uh, their extra dimension skin finishes and stuff like that. And they have a lot of popular colors, but Soft and Gentle, I think, was the original one. Still available. It's very, very good. I do want to get it. Haven't gotten it yet. Um, but I do have the Mary Lou, and I love it a lot. And uh, I definitely think that those two highlighters were trendsetters in the highlighter game. So there you go. Okay guys, so there you have it. Those are makeup products I think were trend centers in the beauty community. Do you agree or do you disagree? I think that these ones are pretty representative of things that started trends. And uh, I hope you guys like this video. If you did, please do make sure to give me a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't already and you want to, please think about subscribing, that'd be cool. And if you have subscribed and you wanna make sure you see all my videos, make sure you hit the no notification bell so that you're informed when I post another video, okay? So with that being said, you guys, take care and I'll catch you next time. Bye.